Good morning, good evening, or good night. It's good to see you and welcome to Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder in physicsclassroom.com under the topic of work and energy titled Match That Bar Graph. The main concept here is conservation of energy. The total amount of energy in the universe never changes, although it may change type or may transfer from one object to another. In this particular concept builder, we will not be looking at energy transferring from one object to another, mostly a tiny bit towards the end. Um, but we will be looking a lot at it changing type, meaning it might change from kinetic energy to gravitational potential energy, or from gravitational potential energy to kinetic, or from elastic potential energy. We'll see that a little bit in the final one. So remember, we have learned that work can add energy to a system. That is something we will not see here, um, is somebody pushing on something or an engine pushing on something, um, chemical energy. But we will see energy leave the system in the final uh, trophy on this concept builder. Uh, and that happens typically from friction um, or drag as um, there is work being done against it and you end up with thermal energy. I believe this concept builder calls it dissipated energy. So uh, just a quick reminder here, the main ones we're going to see are kinetic, which is our equation. Kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. So we're really looking at whether something is moving or not. Okay. Um, and how fast it's moving, how much of it, its energy is devoted to it moving. On the other hand, we have gravitational potential energy, which is determined by the position of an object in a gravitational in a gravitational field, uh, typically that means how high is it above a reference frame. Okay, um, so let's get into our first thing here. So the first two trophies just have two little bars. Notice it's called match that bar graph. So we have a bar graph for potential energy, and this in each instance is talking about gravitational potential energy. And um, we also have one for kinetic energy. I've written kinetic energy in red here. So when this gets filled up, it's red. And so each box of this represents a certain amount of energy. We'll just call it a unit of energy. So it's important to count those up. Notice this one starts with zero units of kinetic energy and five of potential energy. Okay, because I can't draw them super quick, I am just going to be writing numbers like five, and zero, um, and that'll let you know that there's zero kinetic because kinetic is red, and there's five potential because potential is green on this concept on this concept builder. So let's start by just talking about in general. You'll see things that are moving up and down, roller coasters, pendulum, balls bouncing, things like that. I'm going to leave out the background of what it is that's happening. I'm just going to say we have an object that is here, and then at some other time it is here, at some other time it is here, and at some final time it is here. And this could be a roller coaster going on some sort of a track. It could be a ball bouncing. Just, all you need to do is you want to be looking at how high they are. So our reference frame is going to be the bottom of this uh, thing, whatever it is. Okay. Um, and so we know that our uh, object here, whatever it is, started out with five total units of energy, zero kinetic, five potential, zero plus five means five units of energy. So we know that the total energy everywhere, if it starts with five here, it's got to still have five here and still have five here and still have five here because the first two trophies tell you there is no friction, no drag, no loss is what they're getting at. Okay. And there's no work being done here. So the total mechanical energy here has to be five for every object. Okay. And remember that mechanical energy can either be kinetic or gravitational potential or a combination of the two. So when you do this concept builder, you'll be clicking through different options. The first thing to recognize is if they don't have a total of five, it can't be right because it's not going to gain energy because there's no work. It's not going to lose energy because there's no loss. So if it shows you like 
five boxes of kinetic and two of potential? It's wrong because that's seven. We started with five. We have to still have five. So that's going to eliminate like two or three or four of the different options that you have, which is going to leave you two or one, two or three options that have the right total amount of energy. Then you want to look at the basic idea that this one is the lowest, so it should have the least potential energy. Okay. If it's all the way at the bottom of the track, like this one is, or the bottom of the path or whatever it is, if it's at the bottom, like the lowest it could possibly go, typically it'll record that as zero. And so in that case, this bottom one would read five kinetic and zero potential because it had to equal five. The total mechanical was five. And if it's at the bottom, if it's at the reference level, it's going to have zero potential. That means all five must be kinetic. Now, the ones in between, it's not always easy to tell. Is this one supposed to be one uh, a potential energy or is that two potential energies? Is that one fifth of the way or two fifths of the way? Well, they won't have both as an option. OK, so you will look for either a one or a two here for potential energy. Well, if it's a one, then it had better have four units of kinetic energy. If this is high enough to be a two potential energy, then it would have three kinetic. Because remember, it has to equal five. Four plus one is five. Three plus two is five. Okay, and same thing here. If, if this one was four and one, well, this is a little bit higher. Maybe this one is three and two. It's a little bit higher, so the so the two the one became a two, okay. And so um, let's just put a line here. So if this one is correct, then that might be correct. However, if this one is correct, well, then maybe it's a little bit higher. Maybe this is uh, got three potential here, if. This one had two potential. This one would have three potential. And if this had three potential and it has to have five total, then it would have two kinetic. Okay. So to summarize the first two trophies here, you're looking at the total number of energy it starts with. In this case, it's one, two, three, four, five plus zero. There's nothing there. So it has a total of five. So each of your other locations needs to have five. And then make sure your lowest location has the smallest amount of potential. And then that amount of potential grows as you get to higher and higher resource, uh, uh, higher and higher potential energies. OK, uh, then when we get to the last one, now you're going to have to deal with two more types of energy. You can see we've still got kinetic is red and we've got gravitational potential is green. Then we also have dissipated is uh, orange. That's the energy that's lost. Remember, loss turns in typically to thermal energy. So that would mean all the energy that started out at the beginning here has now turned into the random motion of molecules um, due to friction and collisions and things like that. You'll also see we have elastic potential energy. Um, in this case, we've got a spring at the beginning here. So we're starting with some elastic potential energy. If you had a spring compressed somewhere else, you might have elastic potential energy later. If you had a bungee jumper and that bungee cord is stretched, then you might have elastic potential energy at the end. OK, so just keep in mind uh, to, to look for uh, that type of energy. In this case, it starts with that kind of energy. We have five units of gravitational potential energy because it is above the reference flame frame. By the way, that blue line I drew there to indicate the lowest point of the track. And that is what we'll consider our reference frame. It seems like whenever something's at the lowest point, it considers it to have zero potential. And if it's somewhere a little bit higher, it would have a little bit more potential. OK, um, so uh, by the way, the, the things listed down here at the bottom are not correct. 
I didn't want to use the correct ones because I want you to think about every one in the concept builder. But let's go through the basic idea here. Okay, so once again, we started with some height here. So we had some gravitational potential energy to start with. Once again, one, two, three, four, five. And we also see the spring is compressed. We also have one, two, three, four, five units of energy. That means we start with a total of 10. It seems like almost all of these have 10 total units of energy at the end as well. So you aren't gonna be able to use that in the wizard level to, to eliminate choices. You're gonna to have to understand the different types. So what I'd recommend is saving kinetic for last. Okay, yeah, the lower it gets, the faster it'll be going, that's true, but that also depends on how much energy is lost. Okay, so you're gonna to want to choose three options here for A, B, and C that first of all, have the gravitational potential make sense. So if at this height, it's five units of gravitational potential, well then a little bit lower here for A, four kind of makes sense. So four might be right here for gravitational potential. It could be three, okay? So you just have to look for one that makes sense for everything, remember. We'll get to this gray part in a second. Okay, then we see the next lowest one is C. So C might be at two. So we might expect to see two green boxes for C because once again, its height is, let me draw that in green. Its height is not as big as it was at A. So it has to be less than whatever A was. And we see B is the closest to the reference frame. That should have been above the blue line there instead of going beyond it. Um, it's above the reference frame there just a little bit. So you could have uh, one green like you do see here, or they might have decided that was all the way at the bottom. Probably not because this is pretty clearly lower. And so one is a very reasonable thing to see for B. Then the second thing you might want to look, you'll want to look at is dissipated. The amount of dissipated energy should increase as this continues along the track, because it says, consider the effects of friction, air resistance, and collisions. The friction and the air resistance are the key thing for what I'm saying right now. Okay, so uh, as it continues to roll along the track, it's gonna lose some energy to friction to turn into heat. So it will have lost some by A. That's how we know A is wrong. It should have some of this orange color. Okay, not very much. And if this ends up being right, if we have two units lost by the time we get to B, then we should have had one unit lost. So there should be one orange uh, square in here at A. And then by the time we get to C, not only has it gone over more track, but it's slammed into this brick wall here. And so we should see quite a bit of orange. Okay, so so far that's looking good, except actually C can't be right. Remember we needed to have three, two or three, uh, cubes of green. Okay, so if we had two or three cubes of green and then a bunch of orange, so far that makes sense because once it's slammed in the wall, it will not be moving. Then we look for elastic potential energy. Once again, in this case, after the first step, there is no spring, there is no bungee cord, there's nothing that would be uh, causing it to stretch or compress in a way that would push it back to its original position. So there is no elastic potential energy after the initial point here. But there may be some questions with bungee cords or things like that. And when they're stretched out, you would expect some of the energy to be stored in that bungee cord that would be elastic potential. Then whatever you have left over should be kinetic. And you will typically see that the, the lower something is, the bigger the kinetic, although you might have lost a lot to, to heat, like in this case when it crashes in the wall, and then you wouldn't have any kinetic, okay? So let's just go back and go through each of them to make sure we got the idea. A, we would expect to have about four cubes of green, squares of green, which is what we see here. We would expect to see some orange because some energy has been lost to friction as it moved along there, so some orange. And then we would also expect to see some kinetic because it's clearly still moving. It gets to B and C, so it must be moving at this point. Um, and so we uh, would expect to see some red, some uh, uh, one thing of orange, maybe two, and then four things of green. 
Okay, and I forget what order they put all those in. It looks like it goes red, green, and then orange. So we'd expect about four or five of red, three or four of green, and then one or two of orange. Okay, when we get to blue here, or B here, B has just one of green. It's probably moving pretty fast. So actually this one could be right. We'd have to look and see what options we had here and here and make sure we could have less orange here and more orange here, okay? And then of course C needed a little bit of green. Should have no red because it's stationary. Should have a little bit of green and there's no elastic because nothing's stretched out. The rest of it should be orange. I hope you enjoyed learning with me here on Scientific Adventures of Beardman. Um, I'll see you next time.